Well, hello again, and welcome to another video. This one is about workshops, particularly this guy here and how he can manage your workshops for you so you don't have to tell your dwarves to do everything. Who is this mysterious fellow here? Well, he's the manager, and he insists that his job is not that easy, even though he really only goes to his desk for about three frames to validate an order and then goes back to the tavern. He's easy to assign right after Embark, only requiring a meager office, meaning you can assign him to any one chair in your tavern and have him work there. He also requires very little time to do his job, so any dwarf can be a manager early on, even if they have other important jobs to do. You're just going to have to trust me here. Assign a manager. Just do it right away. You don't want to be without one. So exactly how does this self-important do-nothing, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean a uh, fine member of the nobility, help your fortress out? Well, he unlocks additional options for managing labor at your workshops, which are quite powerful options indeed. And I'll show you some examples. There's a lot to cover, so let's just stick with the things that I do in my fortress, and you can sort of extrapolate on that and adapt it to your own needs. Let's first take a look at my masonry workshop. If I press Q and I hover over the workshop, I see an option to press Shift P. This will enter the workshop's profile menu. The first screen I'll be greeted with is the Permitted Workers tab. Here I can select specific workers to allow to work in this shop. Or I can select a minimum and maximum skill level, which allows me to just briefly specify that I only want skilled dwarves to do these jobs. This is not only useful for keeping talented dwarves making things that have quality levels, but also to put less talented dwarves on crap jobs like making blocks out of all of my spare stone. Pressing the right arrow key takes me to the work orders tab, where we can see I already have an active work order for constructing orthoclase doors. If I wish to make a new order, I can press Q, or to remove an order, press R. Pressing P or T manages priority, C changes conditions, and D adds details. Pressing enter will allow or disallow general work orders from tasking this shop. What that means is tasks that are normally automatic, such as tanning hides, will be given to this shop. Turning this off can be helpful in case you have a specific shop of the same type somewhere to do that automatic work, and you don't want this one doing it. You can also adjust how many general work orders are allowed. This prevents the general work orders, again, which are automatic, from flooding this shop and interrupting all of your more important tasks. Now before I show you how to make a work order, there's one last tab, Labor Restrictions. There is no Labor Restrictions tab at the Masonry Workshop, so let's jump on over to my Crafts Dwarfs Workshop and check it out. Look at all these different kinds of labor. I can tell this workshop not to do some of them, which is useful if I'm assigning jobs through the Job List Manager menu, which I'll show later. I personally don't use that menu, so this tab is useless for me, and it may be useless for you too. But it is here for anyone who wants to work through their manager to create jobs. So that's enough reading these menus, let's make a work order. Back to the work orders tab, I'll press Q to create a work order. And sweet elvish breakfast you certainly exclaimed as you witnessed the length of this job list. But fret not, for you just need to type in a word of what you want to make and it will come up. I'll type in jug, and here I see wooden jug, and I'll select that. Immediately it asks for a quantity to create, and the option to enter zero for a perpetual order. So zero means that once this job is activated, it will continue forever and never stop. Entering a quantity means that each time this job is activated, it will make this many of the item. If the job is recurring, it will still continuously make the item, just It'll stop after this quantity and wait for the job to reactivate. I'll enter 5 here because I want to make 5 jugs. Then I'll press enter and it will take me back to the work orders tab where I can see that the work order has appeared. The order is ready. It is to make wooden jug. 5 out of 5 have yet to be completed and it is not validated. This is what the manager will have to do. This is also my opportunity to set details for the job, just like I would in the simplified menu. If I press D, it brings up the types of wood that I can make this out of. If I press F to filter, I can type in willow and select willow wood. I have a lot of this stuff and I want to use it up on these jugs. And here we have my new work order to make five willow jugs. Already there's a major advantage to the simple menu for workshops. 
I could set this to make 500 willow jugs. And rather than having to remember to stop a repeating job, or re-enter 10 jugs 50 times, I only have to make the job once. Now let's quickly go back to what I was talking about in the Labor Restrictions tab, about making jobs through your manager directly. From the main screen, we can press J to enter the job list. Then we can press M to visit the Manager menu. Here we can conveniently see all of the jobs within the workshop profiles of the entire fortress. We can also see that we have similar options on the bottom. I can make a new order from this screen. I can also remove orders, adjust their priorities, and add conditions and details, just like in the workshop profile. This can be extremely convenient, but has one major setback. I can't tell it exactly which workshop to send the job to. I can only specify with Enter the maximum number of workshops. This doesn't really matter if you only have one of a certain kind of workshop or if for some reason you need to set a maximum number of workshops but don't care which one it goes to. But for the most part, I like to set my jobs through the workshop profiles directly because it just makes me feel like I have more control. This screen is still extremely convenient, even for me, and can be your main avenue for managing work orders if you so choose. So at this point, your mind has probably been blown open so wide that you're foaming from the mouth unconscious on the floor. But what if I told you, we can make more than just five jugs. In fact, we can make a fully autonomous workforce that manages their own stocks and resources without our instructions. Enter conditions. Let's head on back to the workshop profile menu of my masonry workshop. I want to do something more than just have my dwarves make an item. I want them to keep four coffers on hand at any time. Whenever coffers are used, I want my stone worker to go to the masonry workshop and make some more so that there's always four on hand. So I press Q to make a new order. I type in coffer and select rock coffer. Then I tell it to make one. I also set the detail for this order to be made out of diorite. Press enter and here we are with our new order for construct diorite coffer. And this time I press C to enter the conditions tab where we can get some really clever stuff going. At the bottom, we can see the option to add an item condition. If we press A, it will add a new condition stating that the amount of items available is at least zero. This is a blank condition. We would have to fill it in with a specific item and the material of that item, which can be done, but there's an easier way. Let's instead press R to add conditions from reagents slash materials. This has now created an auto-filled condition. It knows that diorite is the material needed to make the job, so the condition says amount of diorite available is at least 10. And we're going to change that to at least 1, because we're only making 1 at a time. And again, this is just to prevent cancellation spam. Another option we have is P, to add conditions from products. Just like R, this autofills a new condition this time about the products of the job. It says amount of diorite coffers available is at most 10. Now I'm going to press Q to change the purple text to less than, and then I'll press N and enter 4 as the number. So now it's amount of diorite coffers available is less than 4. Now what exactly have we done here? Well, we've made this job only activate if the amount of diorite available is at least 1 and the amount of diorite coffers is less than four. So my mason will only do this job if I need more coffers, and will only start if the materials are available, reducing cancellation spam and making it so that I never again have to ask for coffers to be made, or ask for coffers to stop being made. Now just for education's sake, let's make one of those blank conditions and see what these options at the bottom are for. I allows us to change the type of item. We can choose, for example, barrels. Then M allows us to change the materials, for example, willow wood. And T allows us to change traits, which is useful if we want it made out of a type of material that normally is split up into many kinds, for example, leather. We can also use this to specify only hard items or only magma safe items. If you find that the item type menu is forcing you to be more specific than you want, chances are what you're looking for is in the traits menu instead. Finally, there's also the order conditions by pressing O. I'm not sure how these are effectively used. Basically, 
It forces the order to wait until another order has been completed or is active. Maybe someone can write in the comments below how they use this so I understand what exactly it's good for. Now before I wrap this up, let's make a more complex example of conditions. This time, I want my cook to only make simple meals until a certain number have been made, and a large amount of resources are available, at which point he will make a certain amount of lavish meals on top of that. This creates a smart and automated workflow, where my cook only makes lavish meals when resources permit, otherwise he makes simple meals to help conserve resources when things are getting a little too tight. So let's enter the workshop profile for my kitchen and make a new order to prepare easy meals. I'll set this to 150 because based on some napkin math I just did, that's a little bit more than a fortress of 200 dwarves will eat each month. So with the order created, I go into the conditions menu. And the first thing I want to do is add a condition about the products by pressing P. I want to keep on hand enough simple meals to feed my entire fortress for at least a whole season. So I'm going to set this condition to say the amount of unrotten prepared meals available is less than 400. So now if the meals ever dip below 400, my chef will make 150 more. Then I'll change the frequency with which this is checked to monthly instead of daily, using the plus and minus keys. This way the maximum production speed, should we really fall behind, is 150 per month, which is just more than the dwarves eat. And this job is now complete. I don't want to put a condition in there to reduce cancellation spam because I would rather see a message if for some reason meals aren't being made in my fortress. So let's go back to the work orders menu and create one more order, this time for lavish meals. And I only want to order 10 this time and I'll have it repeat daily. The reason for this is because if something happens to our resource supply, I don't want to accidentally have 150 lavish meals get approved right before the conditions are broken, cutting way too deep into resource stocks. So with the order made, I want to go into the conditions menu and add a condition for the products with P. I'll change that condition to say the amount of prepared meals available is at least 400. With this condition, the lavish meals will not be cooked unless 400 meals are already available and we're clearly not hurting for food. But I do need one more condition regarding prepared meals. Unfortunately, if I press P, it just sends me back to this condition, so I'll have to add the condition with A and fill in the type of item as prepared meals. Now I'll change this new condition to say the amount of prepared meals available is at most 600. Then there's one last condition I need to make this work properly. I need to make a condition about the reagents slash materials by pressing R. I don't need to be specific about solid items for this condition, so I'll remove that one, and I'll use the unrotten cookable items condition alone. I'll set that to be at least 1000. The logic behind all of this is that simple meals will be produced as long as there's less than 400. Once that 400 number is hit, lavish meals will begin producing until there's 600 meals, but not if there's less than a thousand unrotten cookable items available. In short, my dwarves will only cook lavish meals when it's appropriate, and I will never have to ask them to cook another meal ever again. The last thing I want to say is just a couple of little tips. First, if you have a linked stockpile to a workshop, then a job that checks for available materials will check the entire fortress, but the worker will only have access to what's in that stockpile. That means you may see cancellation spam if you have materials for the job sitting outside of the stockpile because the manager will approve the job even though the worker can't complete it. Another tip is to just reiterate that if you make a perpetual order by entering zero as the quantity you want made, it will only check that order once the order will remain active forever, eventually exhausting the materials and causing cancellation spam. Conditions that you add to that order are only for the initial check and will not stop the order if they're broken. So I hope this video has helped you improve workflow in your fortress. If you haven't used workshop profiles before, then I'm sure that it has. These systems are very flexible and extremely powerful and allow you to basically inform your dwarves rather than command them so that they can run things on their own and you can worry about buying tickets to the circus or teaching your dwarves the secrets of life and death. Anyway, 
I'll be here for the next one. See ya.